He's on the bunting way, on the bunting side of things today. All right. We talked last week a little bit more on the, um, you know, hitting diagonals and all those, all those things on how our approach is going to be at the plate. One thing is, an, is is a part of our offense that 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 I am a big I am a big believer. In, okay, um, I think certain situations call for it. I think I like to play the game fast. I like to play small ball. If I can advance a runner, I'm going to do it. Okay, if I can sacrifice, if I have to sacrifice an out, so be it. Um, I also think there's value. What's the difference if I get a base hit past the hitter, past sorry, past the um past the defender and into the outfield or in front of the uh, in front of the defender. It shouldn't matter. A base hit is a base hit. I'm trying to gain I picked up 90 feet at a time by making less outs, and if I have to sacrifice an out to advance that base runner, then so be it, okay? And different parts of the game um, dictate that, right? Uh, you see it probably a little bit more at the college level, right, especially as about 10 years ago when they switched over to the uh, BB core bats. Um, and it, you know what? Put pressure on defense. Make the defense earn it. Make the defense execute their bunt defense. They can know everyone in the park that that guy is bunting. If the defense can't execute their bunt defense, then so be it, okay? There's a lot of different things that we can do when we control the bat to our advantage, all right? And controlling that allows us to put a lot of pressure on it. Bunting and runs. Bunting and running. Um, hit and runs, okay? Um, hitting behind the runner. Uh, super important. All those things are, are acquired – all those things are an acquired skill set, and it's things that you can work on, okay? Um, when we're talking about bunting, okay, it shouldn't change your approach from how, how you would set up by any means, okay? It, it really shouldn't. Now, I'm going to do this straight on so you can kind of see it. I'm going to use the T here to determine the strike zone. Wherever I set up as a hitter is where I set up. I'm going to let you guys deal with that, okay? Now, yeah, I shouldn't be gyrating or doing anything crazy when I'm going to sacrifice bunt. Okay? Sacrifice bunt, everybody in the park can know it. All right? A little, again, refresher on the bat anatomy. I want to be at the weight of the bat where it's centered. Okay? My bottom hand is my rudder in this sense, so it's going to take the direction. If my bottom hand does a certain thing, it's going to dictate where, the, where I'm going with this. Okay? So when I set myself up the bunt, just going to pull the tee back for a second here. I'm going to start at the top of the strike zone when I go to bunt. I'm going to allow my back foot to pivot. So if the pitcher's over here, the back foot's going to pivot. I'm going to cast my barrel towards, okay, towards the pitcher in that sense. And depending on the situation, I'm going to angle where I need to bunt. And my knees, like I said before, are going to dictate, okay, going from the top of the strike zone down. I never start my barrel in the middle of the strike zone. I always start at the top of the strike zone, and I use my knees to work down. Once I get to an uncomfortable situation with my knees, guess what? It's no longer a strike anymore. I'm not bunting it. But the main thing is keeping the bad angle, okay, where the barrel is above the handle. So many times we see this, and so many times we see the ball go up in the air, and it's a lost cause, okay? Puts us in a, 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 negative, a, negative, a negative situation right there, okay? So if I'm set up right here, you're the pitcher, I'm the hitter, we've got a sack bunt situation on. A sack bunt, I'm going to cast my hands towards you. I'm going to stay balanced. I'm going to pivot here. My, my back foot, my laces are now to the pitcher. I'm in a good balanced position. My bat head is at the top of the strike zone. Okay. My hand is around the trademark where I'm nice and balanced. My left hand is on the, on the handle. Okay. As a right-handed hitter. And I'm starting at the top of the strike zone and then going down if I need to. Okay. But again, my bat, my battle never drops below my hands. So if I want to, everyone should probably know this. I'm sure you've heard it at verbatim from high school and summer ball along the way, where once I get to this position, if I'm bunting towards third base, I want to point the barrel towards the first base bag. Okay? If I'm bunting towards first base, I want the barrel to face the first base bag. Why? Because it's going to give me the angle that I need to bunt the ball to the third base. Okay? When do I want the, fir the third base from the field of ball? Well, depending on the situation, if it's first and second, I want the third base from the field. Why? Because now the third, the, the, the infield now has to, has to run a wheel, right? The third baseman now has to field it. It pretty much guarantees, unless it's a rocket at the third baseman, that my, I'm going to have a successful sacrifice where it's going to be second and third. Okay? Now, if sometimes we just got to get the one down, get the one down. It gets down, gets down. Shot gets done, shot gets done. Okay? But we want to always, anytime we go to sacrifice, we want to make sure it's successful. Okay? Successful sacrifice is successfully advancing the runner to the next base. If you are out, so be it. That's the portion of the sacrifice. If, you, if the defense makes an error 
and you're able to get to the base, awesome. Now we got another 90 feet right there. 390, we take it, okay? Sure, buddy, uh, in a couple minutes, okay? So once I cast, okay, I peach, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm lined up. I'm going to punt the ball third base side because my first base, uh, my bow is pulling at the first base bag, okay? My elbow, okay, is kind of tucked to my body, so it doesn't have too much give on this side. Okay, and it doesn't allow me to go anywhere but where I want to punt the ball, which is on the line or foul if I'm bunting for a hit, and I'll explain that in a second in a couple minutes, Joe. Okay, now if I'm bunting the ball towards the first towards the first baseline, okay. So think about it: runner on first, I bunt the ball to first. Okay, want the ball to want the want the first baseman to field it. First and second, bunt the ball to third. Okay, so I'm here. I start. I cast. Now, mom, it's going to change a little bit. My knob is going to face the third base bag, okay? And that's going to allow me to have the angle that I need on the plate, okay? So when I bunt, all right, when I set up, I want to be up in the box. Why? Because I want to work with more fair territory. If I'm in the back of the box, I don't have as much fair territory. So I want to make sure I move up in the box. So whenever as an infielder on the defensive side, of you've heard me say it a bunch of times, have an offensive philosophy on defense, defensive philosophy on offense. It'll, it'll open your eyes, okay? So if I'm a third baseman here, and it looks like a bunt situation, but maybe we're not running a bunt, a bunt defense here, okay? We're not running a bunt trap. So, but I see the, the nine hitter kind of take a couple of steps up in the box, and maybe hopefully the catcher picks it up or, come, or I pick it up on the dugout or one of the coaches picks it up, well, but it's even better if you guys pick it up because now as a third baseman or as a middle guy, you can anticipate in that spot. And now maybe you call time, and now we'll put a play on to run a bunt trap. Okay, so I want to be up in the box. I want to be athletic. So if I'm going down the first baseline this time, okay, knob to third base bag. Again, using my starting at the top of the bat, top of the strike zone, using my knees to control the strike zone of the area that I want to bunt. Okay, so knob to third base to bunt down the first baseline, barrel to first base when I want to bunt the ball down the third baseline in a sacrifice scenario. Okay. Any questions on this sacrifice scenario and the technique for that? All right. Awesome. Okay. So if we're in a sacrifice situation, we want to bunt strikes. Okay. We want to bunt strikes. Sometimes we won't get it down the first time. I may leave it on. Okay. Bunting strikes is paramount. All right. Yeah. We would like to bunt ideally a middle fastball, right? It's the easiest one for us to handle, okay? Um, I think people do us a favor if they throw us a breaking ball in that spot. Why? Because you get to see the break on it, and now you know where it is. It gives you a little bit more time to react, maybe, okay? So covering the strike zone is important on things strikes. If we're taking, okay, maybe it's a fake bunt. We're just reading the defense in the spot. Whenever we make one, we, get, we show early on a sacrifice. Just like I said before, on a sacrifice, you're showing early. The whole park can know. You don't want to give it away too much where it allows the corners to, 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 um, to trap, okay, to get real close to you. All right? If you see that, if you see this, where a third baseman, and I'm a third baseman, okay, well, guess what? I want to make sure I pull back. Boom. We'll do a slash in that sense, okay? So, but you need to think in that side where if all of a sudden I got these two guys breathing down the pitcher's neck and they're inside the 60-foot mark, well, guess what? They just gave me a free hit. I'm going to butcher boy this. Boom, choke up, come back, choke up on the barrel, slide, slide your left hand up, right hand down, and boom, okay? That's how we do that. We're going to go all the way back down to the knob to try and take a full swing. It's a short swing, okay? If we're taking all together where it's not a strike, okay, doesn't exist. We're not bunting this. This is not a pitch we're going to bunt, okay? Whenever we come back, we're out here, we're straight early, we always pull back. By rotating back our right foot, if we're a right-handed hitter. So I'm here. I'm going to pull back into the catcher's eyes. Why? Because it's going to keep the catcher back. So if it allows me to maybe – I read the defense, okay, as the third base coach in that spot, and I just saw, wow, they are they're they left this open. Well, guess what now? I can put a fake bunt on here. Boom. Let's not waste it out here. I can advance this guy to second base by running him. So now if you keep the catcher back by pulling back into his eyes, he has to stay back. He can't come out and cheat to come get that throw to throw down, right? So he's got to stay back. He has to stay in his lane. And guess what? If he makes contact with your bat, it's catcher's interference. We're all good. Now we got first and second or the, everyone's on base, okay? Even better, okay? So just keep that in mind. So if we're pulling back, I'm going to do it from this angle. We want to keep the catcher back in that spot. So that's a 
fake bunt, okay, or if we're, we're taking the pitch, okay? It's not a strike up. Guy just bounced the ball in the dirt. We're going to go here, stay back. Now the catcher's got to block it. Hopefully our runner on first base is good. Good, good dirt ball reads, and he's able to, you know, advance, to, advance them to the next base in that sense with a good dirt ball read. Because now you got the hitter showing bunt in the catcher's eyes. The ball's hitting the ground. The catcher's got to smother it. He's got to get up. He's got to throw a strike down to second base. Now the second baseman or a shortstop needs to put a perfect tag on that spot or the guy third, going to third base in some aspects, okay? So, to recap, okay, sacrifice bunt, okay? Square and early, pivot the backside, cast, get the top hand uh, at an equal to equal part of the barrel, okay, right around the trademark. Left hand is going to control the angle. If we want to bunt the ball to first base, barrel points to first base. If we want to bunt the ball to third base, knob or handle points to third base, okay, to get our angle. If we're taking the pitch, we square early again on the sacrifice. We're coming back in the catcher's eyes to keep him back. Again, we're a little bit up in the box, okay? If if we know it's a fake bunt, move to the back part of the box. Why in that sense? Because guess what? We're going to try and keep that catcher back even longer by, keep, by staying in the back part of the box and not just the front part of the box. So it's a little gamesmanship in that area. So, so think about that as well, okay? Now, last uh, – any questions on that, taking – Sack punts. Okay. All right, moving along. Last piece here, okay? Bone thing for a hit, okay? My favorite thing to do. Love it. I'm a huge bone for a hit guy. I love when guys have that part of their repertoire. If you don't, try and work on it, please. Um, it just gives us such a weapon in that sense where, especially if you can run a little bit. Um, but usually, I will tell you this. Your best hitters are probably your best bunters because they control the bat really well. Okay, so here we go on a bump for a hit. Again, move up in the box. Okay, we want to make sure if I'm now I'm going to start as a righty, bunting down the third baseline. Okay, rule of thumb should be on the line or foul. Okay, so why do I want it on the line or foul? Well, if it's on the line, it's a really tough play for the third baseman, right? If if it's foul, I get to go again, right? I get a redo, all right? Or you know, the back continues. No, no harm, no foul there. So on the line or foul, the last thing we want to do is bunt for a hit and bunt it right back to the pitcher, okay? Because if we're bunting for a hit, I'm not asking you to sacrifice. Bunting for a hit is different than a sacrifice. Sacrifice, I want to show early, okay? Don't care if the whole park knows. A bunt for a hit, the element of surprise is there. I want to make sure that I do not show until the last possible second. And depending on, and you need to get comfortable on what that is. Is that when the pitcher comes set and lifts his leg and then starts to go? Is it when he shows you? His lower half, now you turn and go, all right? So he can't change where he's going to throw. He's going to throw the ball at you. Okay, no problem. I'll take the hit by the and I move to the next. I pick up my free 90. Thank you. Okay? Uh, so, one thing for a hit. Let's talk about third base side first as a right-handed hitter. Okay? So what I want to do in this sense, I want to make sure that the bat, I'm a little choked up on the bat so I can get up fast. I can get up the barrel where I need to be faster. Okay? I'm going to probably have a loose, relaxed grip in this sense, moving up in the box. Okay? Now, when I go to bunt for a hit, I'm a big believer in this. I believe you take a, I believe to take the drop step in that sense, okay? It's not so much the drop step. I'm not going to just pivot here and bunt for a hit. I want to try and get my angle towards first base as best as I can while my bat angle, okay, stays towards the third base on the line or foul, okay? So I'll do it two ways. I'll do it straight on as if you're the pitcher, and I'll do it sideways so you can see it, all right? So my technique is very simple. I've been very successful with it. All right, is I'm going to take my right foot, drop back, and when I get – almost jump. I'm going to take my left hand, okay, and I'm going to get it nice and tight to my body, okay? I'm going to have my bat angle pointing towards first base on that angle where it's not down. It's not, it's not all the way up, okay? It's at a slight angle so I can get the ball down on the ground, okay? But, again, my left – my right arm is going to be nice and tucked into my chest, my left hand is going to be close to my body because I'm creating that angle. And if you look at it, it's going to be a very similar angle. See the back part of the plate right here that's slanted? I'm going to just move it up because I'm out in front. That's the angle that I want to have, okay? And I want to be nice and tight to my body. If I'm here, i got a too much of a distance that I might bounce it back to the pitcher, okay? So I want to be on the line of foul. So I take my drop step back. I pull this here. I get to there. Boom. It bunts. It's on the line of foul. And now i got a nice running start out of the, out of the box. Okay, with a nice trajectory. I'm not sitting here, boom, upright, trying to bunt it from here. I'm athletic. I slide my hands down. I get it. I bunt. It's here. I have my angle. My back's not going anywhere. 
So getting it, if you're really good at it, use the straight line of the connection to the barrel, to the handle, down to your elbow, nice and tucked, out in front of the plate, out in front of your body. All the blunt should be out in front of your body, okay? So I'll do it from the side this time. Okay, so I'm moving myself up in the box, okay? I'm taking my drop step back. I have my elbow tucked, okay? My left arm is my is pulling myself close to my body, and I have my angle, and I want to create that angle on the line of foul, okay? And again, that's got to be a middle-in pitch. It's very difficult to try and bunt the ball down the third baseline with a pitch on the outer third, okay? If you're going up there with a bunt for a hit mentality, look for it. In, it's almost like trying to hit a home run. You're looking for your best pitch and your best spot, all right? So that's third baseline. First baseline for the righties, bunt for a hit. My favorite thing. A push bunt, okay? Such a weapon. We've used it to our advantage so many times. It's called, I call it a free ribby. Say a runner on third base, infield is back, first baseman is back, right? All you got to do is get it past the pitcher. It's a free RBI. And it's probably going to get you a base hit too, okay? That's the way we can cash that run in. When we bunt for a hit on the push bunt, okay, we want to make the second baseman field the baseball. Can't stress that enough. So push bunt, as a righty, if you're bunting for a hit, towards the right side, either for a hit with no one on or for a free ribby, okay, with a runner in scoring position that you're trying to bunt in, probably a third base, okay? A couple minutes, bud, okay? I want to make the second baseman field the ball, and I don't push at it by pushing my arms, okay? I don't stab at it by trying to check swing and drive it towards the second baseman. I want to make the second baseman field the ball. Can't say it enough. That gets us in the triangle between the pitcher, the first baseman, and the second baseman. Okay, second baseman fields the ball. It's not enough to get it towards that angle to the and it not pass the pitcher. It's not enough. The ball has to go to the second baseman. Again, drill it in your head. That's a weapon for you. Right-handed hitter. Okay. Again, I'm starting him up in the box. Okay. I take my drop step. Okay. Now this time, my angle, third base. Uh, my knob is facing third base. My angle here. Check this out. It's the same part of the back part of the triangle to the base except it's up here. That's my angle, okay? When I take my drop step, I, I'm here, I slide my hands down. When I go to push, I'm not pushing with my arms. That's going to pop the ball up, I promise you, okay? And it's going to deaden the ball. It's not going to go anywhere, okay? We're going to push with your right foot, okay? That's going to allow you to move the ball forward towards the second, towards the second baseman where he's playing on the field. Now, I can even take it a step further. Where the second baseman will normally play as infielders, everyone should know that. Okay, I'm going to take my right foot, which is my back foot. And if the second, if you're, say for instance, you're looking at me towards, I guess maybe that your first base in your camera. Second baseman is just to my left now, where I'm pointing. You're, you're if you're looking at the camera, you're right. I'm going to take my back right foot. I'm going to use my angle. I'm going to point my right foot where the second baseman is playing. Okay, that's where I want to drive. That's why I'm going to. That's where I'm going to push this one to. So I take my drop step back. Okay, now I'm in this angle, and now my right foot is pointing towards the second baseman where he's playing, and I'm walking out towards him, okay, because that's how I'm going to get it, and it allows me to take my next step forward on my running path towards, second, towards first base. If you're trying to run and bunt at the same time, it's not going to work. You've got to bunt the ball first, okay, catch the ball, get the thing down, then run. We want to put ourselves in an athletic position to run, once we execute the bunt, okay? So one more time, push bunt. Love this play. You will get this call at some point, okay? I will put this play on for you. It is a weapon. It is even better when you do it on your own and it doesn't come from the bench. It is a surprise. It is unexpected, but it's so successful, and it's something that in college baseball, if you can master, you can get another two to three hits, four hits, maybe even more per year, especially if you can run, okay? So one more time. All right. And when I'm push pointing towards the right side, I take my drop step back. I got my angle, right? My right foot is planted and pointed towards where the second baseman is. I'm using my arms to just steady the bat. Okay. I'm following the trajectory of the ball. I'm going to catch it and I'm walking out, I'm pushing with my right foot, not my hands. Okay. And that's going to align me in a good athletic position to advance myself to first base. Okay. Any questions on the bunt for the hits? Third baseline or first baseline? Okay, now I know we got a couple of lefties, all right? So I just want to touch base on the left-hand side, okay? Now, lefties, is the opposite, right? So if I'm standing left-handed, okay, 
I go to pivot, same concept. I want to be up in the box, right? All those things apply. You just reverse, okay? Now, when I go to cast on this side, if I'm bunting down the first baseline, barrel towards the third baseman. If I'm bunting towards the third baseline, okay, knob towards the first base bag, okay? So, barrel towards the third base bag to go down the first baseline, knob towards the first base bag to go down the third baseline, okay? In that sense, again, pivoting, good center of balance, not too far forward, not too far back. I want to be out in front of home plate, not behind the, not behind the plate, okay? Now, when I bunt down the third baseline, okay, it's kind of just going to be a placed bunt, okay? You can try and push it, all right? You really got to be good on the back control. But what we're going to do, if we're, if we're bunting for a hit as a, as a, as on the third base side, down the third baseline, you're going to literally catch the ball, boom, deaden it, make it go up the line, on the line of foul, and then you're going to drop the bat and go. Don't try to run out of the box and do the same thing. It's not going to work. Almost, buddy. Almost. Almost, buddy. Okay? Now, if I'm going down the first baseline, this is the one that's tricky. This is the drag bun. We're going to take it with us. Okay? And the way we're going to do that, I love doing this also on the left side. I want to take my left foot. Okay? Start towards the back of the box. I'm going to watch the pitch come. I'm going to take my left foot. It's going to cross over. I'm going to take it with me as I go. Okay? The, the ability to do that in sync is tremendous because you're coming from the back of the box. You're using a crossover step. You're taking the ball with you, and you're going. Okay, so just to angle back off camera here, all right, back of the box, okay, I'm nice and steady. I take my left foot crossover step, boom. Okay, my angle has to be where my, my bow is positive to my handle negative. It is a controlled aspect of things. If you're trying to do that and the ball's on the outer third, get ready. It's going to go right back to the pitcher. It's a ball that's going to be middle in that you need to read, and it's something that you're going to show probably very late. And if you know what, if anything, just showing sometimes changes the aspect of the defense. And you need to make sure you play on to that. Okay? Any questions on that? All right, last piece, squeezes. Okay? Squeeze. All right, we'll have our signs for all those things. When we're, we're talking about squeeze, it's do or die. Get the bunt down. Can't stand when we're, can't stand when we're in BP. Almost, but. Can't stand when we're in BP and it's it's sack sack squeeze and I throw the squeeze on purpose over here and somebody takes it. No, 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 no. That's the only time we're taking a pitch on a squeeze if it's a safety squeeze. We don't run too many of those. Okay? Squeeze. Get the bunt down. If it's in the other batter's box, get the bunt down. If the ball is at you, either wear it or get the bunt down. Okay? A squeeze is a do or die play. You have to get that ball down. Okay? And again, the squeeze is something you show late. You don't show the squeeze early, okay? The squeeze is, again, element of surprise. So having that preparedness to go into the physical game when the mental side takes over, you can understand what the plug and play on the challenge is, okay? So squeeze, I want to show late, okay? So as soon as the pitcher shows me his lower half, I'm squaring. Boom, I got to get this bunt down, all right? The runner's coming, okay? This is an RBI situation for me. It's do or die, get the bunt down. If not, he's probably dead at the plate, okay? Um, we'll get into that in the special plays in a little bit, okay? Um, down the line in a couple of uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. Any questions on squeezes, bunts, any of the things we talked about today? Almost, buddy. Okay, fellas. Um, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you listening to everything today. Um, 